Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 221 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I'm answering one of the most common questions that I get. Do skin rashes in certain areas mean anything? The short answer is that they can. While the long answer is that it's complicated, rash placement can help give you clues to your case and where you need to look in order to confirm potential issues going on. What I'm going to share is by no means a way to diagnose yourself. That's the role of your doctor. I'm simply going to share some clinical pearls with you to help you on your quest to dig deeper into your case. So what do rashes in certain areas mean? Well, when it comes to placement of rashes and what they could potentially correlate to from a root cause perspective, it's not necessarily so cut and dry. What we understand about the skin's microbiome is that different areas on the skin have different microbiome diversity. For example, in certain areas such as the armpits or groin, the skin microbiome is considered to be a damp environment. That's one reason why those particular areas are more prone to fungal overgrowth. This can be more easily visualized by the diagram that I'm including in the post for this episode. So if you haven't, checked out that post, head over there so you can see the diagrams because we've got two real winners to share with you today. Now, different concentrations and types of bacteria live in different areas of the skin. And what's more, the commensal fungal organism called malassezia, which I've discussed on the show, tends to live in areas considered to be sebaceous, such as the head and back of the neck. And you can check more out in episode 173, all about malassezia. Now, some research specifically on head and neck dermatitis point towards a link to malassezia being a problem. And then we have to consider the 10% of Dupixent users end up with this crazy facial redness that also is looking to be triggered by malassezia. So the point here is that The microbiome is complex, and it's also not just a bacterial problem. Fungal organisms can also cause a problem, and we're not even going to go into the whole other boat of mites and parasites and other issues that can arise. I just want you to generally understand that the microbiome on the skin varies from place to place, and we're specifically trying to understand how does that potentially inform if there is some underlying issues even deeper than what's happening at the level of the skin. So let's get into a few key questions that I've frequently been asked. The first of which is, do abdominal rashes mean that I have gut problems? And that has pretty much been most of the assumption is that a rash on the abdomen implies that your gut must be a mess. It's possible that could be the case, but in short, if you have rashes on or around your abdominal area and back, essentially your midsection, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have gut problems. You could have underlying gut problems, as I've often discussed here on the Healthy Skin Show, and if you've been a longtime listener, you know that we talk about the gut a lot. The gut-skin connection is a very real concern that is only now being recognized mostly by more integrative-leaning dermatologists. But generally speaking, I would caution you from assuming that the rashes around the midsection automatically correlate to a gut problem simply due to rash placement. A better option would be to go through my Skin Rash Root Cause Finder Guide to better understand if there is actually a gut function and or gut microbiome component to your case. So what about rashes around the eyes? That's a good question. Well, some of you might recall that Dr. Julie Greenberg had previously mentioned in an episode on malassezia that eye rashes can point toward a potential fungal issue. 
But that said, you have to consider that Staph aureus infections can hide in your nasal passages. Your nasal passages are connected to your eyes via the nasolacrimal apparatus. So basically just consider that all of these different passages inside your face are connected, right? When you cry, we're usually getting tears running down our throat, running down our nose. Everything is connected. And so when I've asked various guests about eye rashes or even rashes just below the nose on the upper lip area, it's important to rule out Staph aureus or MRSA as a culprit with a nasal swab that your doctor can easily run for you. But I think the most interesting correlation of all that I have seen clinically is the link between fungal overgrowth of the internal microbiome and rashes on certain areas of the skin. This topic that I'm about to share with you doesn't necessarily mean that the rashes on the skin are due to fungal overgrowth on the skin itself. It's possible you could have a fungal overgrowth, but I'm not implying that you automatically have fungus on the skin and you need to do something and treat it topically. Rather, this can be a clue to deeper issues that drive internal inflammation. Plus, it can be helpful to understand better what could have been a problem if you look back at your rashes historically, or if you struggle with TSW and need to consider where your rashes commonly showed up before the onset of topical steroid withdrawal. Again, I consider all of this along with the complete picture of your case and the information that you would derive from going through my skin rash root cause finder guide. If you struggle or have struggled with rashes in the past in the following areas, you could consider potential fungal dysbiosis as part of your underlying microbiome issues. The fungal red flags include dandruff, ear rashes, eye rashes, mouth rashes, thrush, meaning a fungal overgrowth inside the mouth and throat, armpit rashes, rashes on the back of your neck, rashes under the breast, inside of the elbow rashes, groin rashes, jock itch, vaginal yeast infections, back of the knee rashes, athlete's foot, and toe and or fingernail fungus. Now, you don't necessarily have to have rashes in all of these spots, but again, I consider this with your case because it could provide clues to what's upending the internal balance and driving inflammation. And in case you're thinking about maybe doing an anti-candida diet, please stop because the anti-candida diet will not fix this issue since dysbiosis to this degree often isn't fully resolved by diet alone. It can be helpful, but I'd much rather you find other productive ways to deal with fungal overgrowth rather than limiting your diet and really struggling to get the nutrients that you need. Now keep in mind that friendly commensal bacteria are supposed to keep fungal organisms in check. So overgrowth could be triggered by drug exposures like from antibiotics, hormonal birth control pills, steroids or certain biologic medications, significant mold exposure, the microbiome that you got from your mother that may have been skewed in a particularly fungally direction, your diet, and other factors. And typically a fungal problem can also mean that there is a dysbiosis or imbalance of bacteria in your microbiome. That said, without a functional stool test, it's impossible to tell if the imbalance would point toward undergrowth or overgrowth of bacteria. For now, this is a great list to run through not only of the rashes that you currently have, but where rashes typically showed up during your life. It's my hope that this clinical pearl will help you become a better detective on the road to healthy skin. Now, if you've got any questions or thoughts to share about this episode or you want to see the graphics that I have in this episode, head on over to skintorrupt.com forward slash 221. That way we can keep the conversation going. 
And then make a point to share this episode with your fellow Skin Rash warriors who are also on their way to seeking answers about how to support their skin, looking for those root causes that are driving the inflammation. Many people find this particular information really helpful, so make a point to share. And before you head off for your day, take that moment to rate and review the Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform, then hit the subscribe button so you never miss a weekly dose of the new research, tips, strategies, and inspiration shared with you on your journey to rebuild healthy skin. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.